Hello and welcome back to Building on a Budget Models. I'm Thomas and today we're going to be unboxing this. It's the Lotus 25 Coventry Climax in 120th scale by Tamiya. So this is from their Grand Prix collection, it's number 44. Uh, you can see a nice image there on the front. Um, it doesn't come with a driver as it says here, but that's you know, on the front, that's pretty common for things like that. So there, a couple of versions of the kit, and it comes with multiple numbers. Um, this was second hand, but apparently whoever bought it before, it was 1999. And there you can see a couple of versions there. The uh, number four there was the 1963 British Grand Prix winner. I believe that was Jim Clark. And then the 1963 South Africa GP winner, Graham Hill. Open it up. Now, as I said before, this was second hand, so some things have been opened, some things have actually been started. Some decals, which still seem in okay condition. Instructions some green parts here and some bits which have already been assembled. Uh, Grey sprue, which also had some parts removed. Poly caps, tyres. So we'll start by looking through the instructions. Throughout the history of Formula One Grand Prix, starting from 1950, Formula One cars have undergone numerous innovative developments. Many of them were accomplished by the Team Lotus, led by a genius, Colin Chapman. Above all, the invention of the monocoque construction chassis was one of his most epoch-making creations. It was in 1962 when the Team Lotus entered their Lotus 25 using the monocoque construction chassis for the first time in the Formula One history. The monocoque frame, formed by bending thin aluminium plates, made it possible to obtain more rigidity and lighter weight at the same time, compared to the space frame construction with steel pipes, which was commonly used until then. The Lotus 25 was powered by the highly reliable 1.5 litre V8 cylinder engine developed by Coventry Climax. The front suspension system used rocking arms inboard spring type, while the rear end used lower A and upper I arms with two radius rods. With the talented driver Jim Clark at the wheel, the Lotus 25 earned three victories in its debut season of 1962. In the following 1963 season, the Lotus 25 and Jim Clark gained stunning seven victories out of ten races, bringing not only the Drivers' Championship to him, but also the manufacturer's title to Lotus for the first time. With its innovative features, the Lotus 25 had a profound influence on the design of the Formula One car, and the glorious history of Lotus arose from this car. Got here suggested colours, and you can see here how this stuff goes together. So these bits... Um, the previous owner has started to put those together. Some decals here for the dashboard. Some decals which need to be added here. Number 1, 4, 8, 18 and 23. So we'll start by looking here. So you can see that this person, uh, the previous owner, has already started putting these together. You've got two parts of the green monocoque here and the uh, kind of silver chassis. And uh, these parts here which go around the, um, the front wheels. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame, but um, it's glued on pretty firmly, so I don't think I'll be able to remove these. So I think what I'll have to do is I'll have to just kind of paint and mask. Um, yeah, but there we are. As well from the silver sprue, we've got these engine parts. Um, there's a few kind of joint seams here, which I think might be sanded away, um, but this is okay. It's not too bad. At least they've not gone too much further. And then you've got the rest of the silver sprue here, the grey sprue, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so you've got things like the bucket seat there, uh, no seat belts in uh, the early 60s, of course. Got the um, uh, engine here, you've got uh, where it says moulded Coventry Climax. Uh, you've got these wheels, now they need to be yellow in the middle and silver around the edge. Um, got the brakes with uh, calipers. Um, all moulded very nicely, can't see any flash on that. Um, yep. 
I don't know when this kit was first tooled. Should probably have found out. There's the steering wheel. Most of the green parts have been removed, so I can show you these separately. So you can see here that this uh, upper part of the monocoque, the previous owner, has already joined these two together. A uh, bit of a join seam there, so I guess I'll be giving that a bit of a sand down. Um, but yeah, it is moulded in green in case you didn't want to paint it. And uh, that will go together like so, as you can see, and then exposing the uh, top of the V8 engine there at the back. And you've got other parts here, that's the roll hoop, so that will need to be silver. Um, I think that's part of the um, pedals, and then other just kind of small parts. I'm not actually sure whether that is a part, no I don't think it is. And we've got this, which I think is the radiator from the black sprue. The rest of the black sprue is here, uh, so lots of piping, things like that that go with the exhaust. Also got these parts here which will go on the wheels. Um, yeah, as I said before, no flash that I can see. It says here 1997, so that must be when this was tooled. So then we've got the chrome sprue here, very nice and bright. Uh, the mirrors, very reflective. Um, now lots of these are parts uh, to support the suspension and they do need to remain chrome. You've also got these springs for the backs which I know need to have um, black so I might use some um, Tamiya black panel liner for that which I think will work quite well. But yeah these uh, are still nice and bright and clear and it's also nice to see that they haven't been removed. Then we've got the only sprue which is still in the bag, the clear parts. You've got the kind of visor here which goes around the cockpit and then you've got this which is a really weird feature so there's a kind of mesh which goes over the top of the engine and uh, they've used a clear part and you can see there's a kind of mesh design on the inside i think that's kind of strange to be honest i don't think that's going to look like a mesh so i might see if i can fashion something which looks like that so we've got the tires here really nice feature on these and on the Honda tyres is that um, they've put the brand marking on there already so there you've got the Dunlop Racing nice sort of uh, groove design on there it's only got the markings on one side so I guess you'll have to get that round that particular side um, but yeah these look really nice um, yep yeah. poly caps which I won't be removing and finally we've got the decals now these have yellowed a little bit in places um, but they still look pretty good. Um, one uh, nice feature is that the Lotus Coventry Climax decal here is separate, so if you did want to mask and paint the yellow stripe, you could then put that on separately afterwards. We've also got the Team Lotus, uh, lots of uh, decals for there, um, and yeah, like various different numbers. I don't think yeah, the permanent number system hadn't yet been introduced to Formula One in the early 60s, so um, drivers often use different numbers from one race to another. I'll be using uh, Tamiya TS43 Racing Green for this, which I've used in the past for uh, Lotus 7 and also for uh, Jaguar E-Type. So there we have it. This looks like a really nice kit. Um, I don't imagine it will take me too long to build, but Obviously, I want to do a really nice job of it, and uh, I can see, you know, for instance, there's brake cables here and things like that, which I may try to add as I'm going along. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've built this and if you have any tips. Please do like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.